Hello, this is Dr. Armand bringing you another exciting lecture into the realm of GenChem 2. In this lecture, we'll be discussing, or excuse me, we'll be doing example problems involving the ice table. So I strongly recommend you watch over Equilibrium Part 2 lecture before uh, watching this lecture. And as you watch this lecture, when you get to a question, pause it, work it out, continue the video check your work. That's the whole purpose of me doing these practice problem videos is so you can check your work after you've attempted the problem. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So in this, uh, this video, what we're going to be doing is working out problems involving the ice table. So the ice table, initial change equilibrium, is used to help us establish what the equilibrium concentrations of reactants and products are given initial concentrations of reactants and products. And so uh, when we have, say, a small K or a K of small magnitude, say K of 10 to the negative 1, 10 to the negative 3, uh, we have to do the ice table in one, one method. And when we have a very small K, where the magnitude of the K versus the initial concentration is quite large, usually on the factor of a thousand or greater, we can apply a approximation and cut down the number of steps we need to do in the ice table. So for those problems where the K is almost the same magnitude as the initial concentrations, we do it one route, that's what we're gonna look at first. And then when the K is a lot uh, if the initial concentrations are a lot larger than the K, say on the magnitude of a thousand, usually they use the five percent rule, but a thousand is a good gauge. Uh, then we can do an approximation and shortens the number of steps uh, we need to do. So we'll look at some of those examples in this lecture. We'll start off with something very simple. Here we have an equilibrium equation involving cis steel beam and trans steel beam. It has a KC of 24, which means you have roughly, you know, same amounts of reactants and products at equilibrium. If we start with 0.015 molar of cis steel bean and 0.008 molar of trans steel bean, initially, what are the equal equilibrium concentrations of trans steel bean? Or what is the equilibrium concentration of trans steel bean? And this should be an N and an R. So we're given the initial concentration of cis steel beam and the initial concentration of trans steel beam. So we'll go ahead and write those so we know the initial and I'll use an O to represent initial NALT concentration and we have trans so the first thing we need to do is to determine uh, which way will equilibrium which way will the reaction shift to reestablish equilibrium so we got to calculate the Q of this of these initial concentrations so q again is products over reactants so here we have the trans steel beam is the product cis steel beam is the reactant and so we calculate q if q is greater than k or less than k it's going to shift one way or the other so when we do this we get zero point five three three one so since q is less than k it's going to shift to make products so what's going to happen we're going to decrease reactants make more product until equilibrium is established or re-established i should say or established so we're going to be using the ice table initial change equilibrium undo that so initially we have point oh one five molar 
of the cis, and we have 0 0.008 of the trans. So whatever cis gets converted, if x moles of cis get converted, we're going to form x moles of trans. So at equilibrium, we would have 0 0.015 minus x and 0 0.008 plus x. So if we solve for x, we can determine the equilibrium concentrations of both the cis and the trans still be. So now what we do is we set it up with the k. So we have 24 equals 0 0.008 plus x divided by 0 0.015 minus x. And so here the, the biggest cause of mistake is algebra. So make sure you do your algebra correctly. And we get point three six minus twenty four x equals zero point zero zero eight plus x. So now we gotta get all the x terms on one side. Let me move that over here. So then when we move it, we get twenty five x equals point three five two and so x equals point zero oh point zero one four And so this is x. Now we can calculate the equilibrium concentrations of both the cis and the trans. So here I use an E. So for cis is 0 0.015 minus 0 0.0141 will give us the cis equilibrium concentration. We get 0 0.0009. And we do the same thing for trans. And we get 0 0.0221. So that's what the equilibrium concentration of trans still being is. We can check our work by calculating K, and our K should be very close to the K given. So K equals products 0 0.0221 divided by reactants 0 0.0009. And And we get, you know, 24.6. So that's very close to 24. So that's a way to check your work. If you were very far from 24, it would be a red flag that, hey, something might be incorrect. So here we have another example. We have the decomposition of hydrogen iodide at a low temperature by injecting 2.75 moles of HI into a three liter vessel. What is the HI at equilibrium? So again, we need to know the initial concentration of HI. Two point seven five divided by three. 
zero point nine one six six seven. So that's its initial concentration. Now, since there's no reactants, or excuse me, there's no products, Q is going to be less than K. And this is because there's no products at the initial at, for initial concentrations. We have no initial concentrations of products. So Q is less than K, it's going to shift to form reactants. So now we can set up our ice table. We have initial. change equilibrium and so initially we have 0 0.91667 of HI we have zero of the products so the change for every two moles of HI we consume, we produce one mole of H2 and one mole of uh, both products, H2 and I2. Let me, I made a mistake here. So again, it's going to be a minus two because we're going to consume two moles and we're going to produce X moles of both products. So for every two moles, two X moles of HI we consume, we're going to form X moles of products. So now at equilibrium, we have this. So now we can set up our equilibrium expression. We know the KC 0.000126. Now remember it's products over reactants, so X times X divided by 0 0.91667 minus 2X, and that's squared. We simplify this a little bit, we get 0 0.00126 equals X squared divided by the 0 0.91667 minus 2x squared. So you see on the right side we have perfect square, so we're going to take the square root of both sides. So we get 0 0.0354. Nine six equals x divided by so now we got rid of the squares, so that's good. Now we can just rearrange the solve for x. So we get Zero point zero three two five three eight minus Double check my work. All right, now we move all the X terms to one side, we get and we get X to be. Is zero point zero three oh three eight one. So this is X. So the equilibrium concentration of HI will 
would be 0 0.91667 minus 2 times 0 0.0 Three zero three eight one zero point eight five five nine. So this is the equilibrium of H equilibrium concentration of HI. Now we can plug this in and check our work. So we're going to solve for K. And K is We get about 1.26 uh, e to the negative 3. So our K checks out, so this work is correct. You always check your K. If your K equals the K given, that means you did the right work. If it's not, go back and double check your work. So again, since it was perfect squares, we could take the square root of both sides and work through the problem. So in this problem, we're looking for the uh, equilibrium concentration of B uh, when given the initial concentrations of A and B react to give C and it gives us the KC. So let me go ahead and write the initial concentrations. Of A and B. Let's write the equation. Let's set up our ice table. So initially we have 0.15 of A. 0.05 of B, 0 of C. And so for every mole of A and B we lose, we're going to gain two moles of C. So at equilibrium, we're going to have these expressions. So now we'll set it up with our K. Now notice here, we don't have perfect squares. So since we don't have perfect squares, we're gonna to have to expand and solve the quadratic equation. So what we're gonna get Now we need to get rid of the denominator.
Now move everything to one side, we get So now we're going to use the quadratic equation, which is negative b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So again, a is the quadratic term coefficient, b is the uh, X term coefficient and C is the constant. So let's go ahead and put these terms in. So we get So we have b squared I made a slight uh, correction here. This shouldn't be 4.017 because when we move it to this side, it becomes negative. So this would be negative. negative 3.983 and so now that's better I made a mistake on that part so you got to make sure you always do your algebra correctly Now let's simplify things a little bit further.
And now, we get this. So we're going to get x to be two roots. Double check my work. Yep, and then we get the other roots. Now, obviously, we can't have a negative root. If it's a negative root, that would mean that we end up with more concentration of A than we started with. So we can disregard the negative root. And now we can find the equilibrium concentration of B. And it would equal 0 0.05 minus 0 0.005247. Let me move that down here. And so B equilibrium concentration is 0 0.05 minus, we get 0 0.04475. Now for A, we would subtract it from 0 0.15. Zero point one four four seven five and C is just two times Now, if we check our work, we get K equals concentration of C at equilibrium squared divided by And we get K to be hopefully close to what we got, what we started with K. And we get 0 0.01699. Nine. So here the K. Uh, is the K we calculated is similar to the K we have, so we did it correctly. One thing you got to remember is make sure you put the products on top, reactants on the bottom, do the algebra correctly, so you don't have any mishaps. If your K, when you're checking your work, doesn't match the K given, it's not close to it, go back and double check everything uh, when you're doing a problem like this. So just to recap, we looked at how to calculate equilibrium concentrations. <clears throat> Uh, using initial concentrations, 
Uh, this is part one. It took a little longer, so we're going to do a part two when to show when we can use a shortcut when the value of K is a lot smaller than the initial concentration. So for part two of these types of practice problems, we'll be looking at those examples. So I hope you enjoyed today's lecture, or I hope you enjoyed the lecture. If you did hit the like button. Until next time, uh, Dr. Armand signing off.